first order differential equations. In this video, we are going to be looking at first order differential equations and deal with some of the methods on how we solve these first order differential equations. First off the bat, let's talk about what are first order differential equations. Okay, I've given you two examples of first order differential equations. I'll just refer to differential equations as DE. So here we have two examples of first order DE and uh, we recognize first order differential equations by the fact that the highest derivative appearing will be just dy dx. Okay? A first order differential equation, you will only see dy dx. Okay? The highest derivative will be dy dx, whereas in a second order de, you will find d2y dx squared. Okay? So that's easy. Okay? So again, first order differential equations, the highest derivative appearing will be dy dx. If you are dealing with a second order differential equation, then the highest derivative appearing will be d2y dx squared. So just observe these examples, okay? two first order differential equations and two second order differential equations. Second order DE will be the subject of a discussion which we will have next time. So in this video, we are going to be focusing on first order DE and how to solve these equations. Okay, methods to solve first order DE. We are going to be dealing with four methods. So, method number one, by direct integration. Okay, so we will learn the methods or we will go through the methods by looking at some examples. So here I have an example. Solve the differential equation ex times dy dx equals to 4 and hence find the particular solution given that y equals to 3 when x equals to 0. Great. So let's start slowly. We have ex dy dx equals to 4 and what we can do is we can cross multiply. Okay, so let me do that slowly. I have ex dy equals to 4 dx. And then I'll bring the ex to the right and I'll get dy equals to 4 over e to the power of x dx. That's what you see here. Okay, so now when we have dy on the left, okay, when we have dy on the left, and we have a dx on the right, we can introduce our symbols of integration. Again, when you see a dy on the left and a dx on the right, we can introduce our symbols of integration and we can perform the integration. When you integrate dy, you will get y. In actual fact, you will have a y plus c, but we will settle that by just writing a constant on the right hand side. Now, when you integrate 4e to the power of minus x, we will get minus 4e to the power of minus x and we have a plus c. This is the constant of integration and this will make up our general solution. I'll tell you again, this is known as the general solution of this differential equation. We are asked to find the particular solution given that y equals to 3 when x equals to 0. So let's plug in y is given as 3 and x equals to 0. So when you plug in the values here, you'll get 3 equals to minus 4 times e to the power of 0 is 1 and plus c. And working this out, you will get c equals to 7. So now we have the particular solution y equals to minus 4e to the power of minus x plus 7. A couple of remarks. What does the particular solution give us? It gives us a specific member of a family of curves given by the general solution. Okay, We notice that in the general solution we have a plus c, so we are dealing with a, a family of curves. Okay, The general solution gives us a family of curves, so once we work out the value of c, 
we get a specific member of the family of curves okay next if the differential equation if the DE can be arranged in the form dy dx equals to f of x then we can use the direct integration method to solve the differential equation again if the differential equation can be arranged in the form dy dx equals to fx then we can use this method that is the method of direct integration to solve the DE so coming back to our problem remember we started with ex dy dx equals to 4 so we can write dy dx equals to 4 over e to the power of x which is 4 e to the power of minus x so now we have dy dx on the left and f of x on the right so when you have a problem like this okay when you have a problem like this you can use direct integration to solve the DE method number two is called by separating the variables so example solve dy dx equals 2x over y plus 1 now the idea behind separating the variables is to take all the y's and the dy on one side and collect all the x's and dx on the other side of the equation okay so on the left hand side you'll see all the y's and dy on the right hand side you'll see all the x's and dx so that's what I have done here okay I've cross multiplied so I'll get y plus 1 times dy equals to 2x dx okay so when you see a dy on the left hand side and a dx here on the right hand side we can introduce our symbols of integration okay so performing the integration so when you integrate y you will get y squared over 2 when you integrate 1 with respect to y you will get y okay like I said earlier we will leave the constant of integration on the right hand side so just leave y squared over 2 plus y on the left hand side on the right hand side when you integrate we will get x squared and now let's introduce a constant of integration so we have the general solution y squared over 2 plus y equals to x squared plus c and we are done let's look at another example okay we asked to solve dy dx equals to 1 plus y over 2 plus x so why don't we go ahead and cross multiply so we will get 2 plus x dy equals 1 plus y dx but that's not good okay we need to collect all the y's and dy on one side and all the x's and dx on the other side so we will write it as dy over 1 plus y equals dx over 2 plus x okay now that's what you see here once you see the dy on the left hand side and you see the dx on the right hand side you can introduce the symbols of integration that's what you see here and now we can carry out the integration when you integrate 1 over 1 plus y you will get ln 1 plus y and on the right hand side when you integrate 1 over 2 plus x you will get ln 2 plus x and don't forget the constant of integration on the right now we have a log term here and we have a log term here so I'm going to replace this C with a log term I'm going to call it ln A okay so rewriting my answer I have ln 1 plus y equals to ln 2 plus x plus ln A remember we're going to use the uh, one of the rules of logarithms okay log m plus log n equals log m n that's what you see here okay 2 plus x times a now you have logs on both sides you can drop the logs so you will get 1 plus y equals to a times 2 plus x and we are done next example we are asked to solve sine x over 1 plus y dy dx equals to cos x so let's follow the solution 
first we write the differential equation that's given to us in one line. So I have sine x dy on the left hand side. Uh, 1 plus y times dx. I'll bring it up to the right hand side. So I'm going to have sine x dy equals to cos x 1 plus y dx. Remember the idea in separating the variables, all the y's and dy on one side and all the x's and dx on the other side. So I have a dy here. I need to bring the 1 plus y to the left. So that's what you see here. And I need to bring the sine x to the right. And that's what you see here. So now we have dy over 1 plus y equals cos x over sine x dx. Now, we can introduce the symbol of integration and carry out the integration. On the left hand side, when you integrate, you will get ln 1 plus y. On the right hand side, when you integrate cos x over sine x, we will get ln sine x and we have a constant of integration. Okay. Let's replace the C with a ln A so that all the terms have all the terms are in log form. So we have ln 1 plus y equals to ln sine x plus ln A. Using the properties of logs, log sine x plus ln A equals to ln A sine x. So now we have logs on both sides. We can drop the logs. We can write 1 plus y equals to a sine x. So leaving y alone on the left hand side, we can write our answer y equals to a sine x minus 1. Now, we want to show that this is the solution of the differential equation. So let's go ahead and work backwards. So let's start with y equals to a sine x minus 1. So let's find dy dx. dy dx will be equals to a cos x. Yeah? So if y equals to a sine x minus 1, we know dy dx equals to a cos x. Now, from here, we know that a sine x equals to y plus 1. So a will be equals to y plus 1 over sine x. That's what you see here. Now, we know that dy dx equals to a cos x. Let's go ahead and replace what we have here for a into this a cos x. That's what you see here. Okay? Let me say that again. Yeah? We know that dy dx is a cos x, and we also have found that a equals to y plus 1 over sine x. So let's replace the a that we have in our dy dx with y plus 1 over sine x, and that's what you see here. Okay? Now, all you have to do is just rearrange it. Okay, bring the sine x up and bring the y plus 1 down and you will get sine x over 1 plus y dy dx equals to cos x which is the differential equation that we started with.